Good morning, folks. Stick around at the end for some big updates and where to find 15 terrific minutes of discussion. First off, we have confirmation from both NASA and NOAA that initial diagnoses of those filament eruptions were accurate. Both will impact Earth. Second one could be a glancing blow, and the first one should arrive tonight. We do not expect major space weather effects. Next, you may have heard about this one already. Some of the worst news we can get on the magnetic front. Hopes that our magnetosphere would be recovering are dashed for the moment as the trend that caused Earth's protective shield to progressively weaken 15% in the last 150 years is definitively continuing, with no place worse affected than the United States and the greater Western Hemisphere. While we're stepping back for a whole world view, you'll find a link to the temperature anomaly maps below at NASA. After cold dominated the last 18 months, we've been eagerly awaiting the heat of El Nino to swarm through, but as of now, the extreme swings back and forth, heat and cold, appear to dominate any one global trend. Coming to the weather, more localized, we see only one convergence of note down here. Even the south central precipitation maker is nothing the Aussies can't handle, but I bet it's chilly in the southwest. Monsoon moisture drive off the Indian Ocean is plainly visible here. The monsoon is indeed underway. There will be rain events in southeastern Africa, but they should mostly affect the low-lying areas and runoff zones while the next convergence is still out to sea. Yanked up RSOE for Europe because that about sums it up. Got a few clouds, but all in all a beautiful summer day and evening set for all but some sparse pop-up storms in the Mediterranean tonight. Solar flaring has been dismal, but if we happen to get an Uyen ramp today, this and the low off Japan would be our top concerns for development. Further north, we continue to see the heat and moisture rolling up the breadbasket and set once more to make bad weather here. Although the top watch zones are right in the middle, we'll pull up the weather channel to demonstrate just how widespread the storms will be this evening. They don't show Canada, but storms are coming up to you guys as well. Back to the sun. Both NASA and NOAA have tossed the latest filament eruption up on their endless spirals. Both show glancing blows or moderate impacts, but definitively being weaker on the second one than the first impact, which is due in about 12 hours here. As we wait, the solar wind telemetry shows very calm conditions, as even the sensitive flux is showing a smoothing arc. Solar flaring? Indeed, back on the floor. This morning we've slipped into B range. Quite the blank disc compared to last week as well. The south central sunspots are spread and had the mixing if their umbras could grow, but it appears not meant to be. Focus shifts to the incoming sunspots whose looping umbral fields are much easier to see than the spots themselves. You can also see how interactive all the solar features are. Everything on that sphere is connected. We see flares destabilize filaments, filaments set off active regions. We've even seen both influence coronal hole power. And speaking of which, about 12 hours until geo-effective position was reached for this one, and about two days of Earth-facing magnetism thereafter as we await the solar wind stream arrival from it two to three days after that. We will be recovering from whatever effect those filament eruptions have on our magnetosphere, hopefully not much. Green at the far left is our incomer, middle of the road on force. Folks, member or not, Head over to suspiciousobservers.org and under premium, click on fly on the wall. Yesterday's uploads were divided so I could make the discussion with Dr. Uyen available to everyone. Just ignore that protected content message and go below to the audio file. Remember, fly on the wall is just audio. If I may speak to members for a moment, there is another short segment between Kong Pop and I under the protected section, but... The gem is our talk with Tony Rango. It's no secret that I hate geoengineering and weather modification, but honestly, truly, cannot get behind the opposition as it stands. As the Mobile Observatory rolls out to Pittsburgh tonight and I say goodbye to my home, I thought I'd take a huge right hook at the harp issue and throw an uppercut to the chemtrail discussion. It's time the people get a horse that can actually win this race. Don't miss it. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.